Hey, what's up everyone? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review we are looking at the new reissue of the MP03 Masterpiece Grimlock. It's a very cool looking figure. Uh, it, just standing there, it has great shelf presence. Everything looks good about it. The kibble is minimal. He just has his little wingy, flappy thingies, which is okay. That's acceptable for me. And it just looks really good, and it has some, it, it actually has a lot of gimmicks throughout, but most of them are good things that I'm not really going to complain about. Uh, most of this figure is a good thing that I'm not really going to complain about. But there are a few things that you'll probably want to know about, so I suggest if you're not sure about getting this figure, you should probably watch this video. He stands just about... Well, to the top of his shoulders, just under nine and a half inches tall, his head's slightly shorter than that. He comes with three accessories, really. We have the crown, which is nice vacuum chrome plastic, really nicely done gold. He has a gun, which has some clear parts to it, which I'll explain soon. And he has the sword, which, by the way, uh, the hands, or the claws, or the feet things are supposed to be flat like that. I just fold them down. I don't know why. I think it looks better. Maybe not accurate, but it looks better. And then he has the sword, which is also largely clear. And I'll explain that in a few minutes. Uh, for right now, because I want to leave the lights on, I don't want to show you the light-up feature. I'll just show you everything else. So as you can see, he's got some different molded colors. We have the red, the gray, the black, and then we have the vacuum chrome gold throughout. The head is a mixture of... Uh, black and gunmetal. There's some paint there, and he does have the nice metallic red visor faceplate thingy. And the cool thing about that is there's a little switch back here. This red thing, you slide that down, and he has the bluish green visor, which looks really cool. So I do appreciate that they hate that he has that. He also has a similar feature for the dinosaur mode as well, so I'll point that out. And then we do have the translucent plastic here with the Autobot logo. It's kind of hard to get the Autobot logo to line up just right. It just kind of slides into place as you put this piece down. So you see that. And then it doesn't quite line up, but it's not so bad. But it, it's cool that it's in there. I'm okay with it. We do have a little bit of paint here on the hip pieces. Not too much paint anywhere else. We have a little bit here in the blue. These are molded pieces. Then we have a little bit in the toes. So on this guy, at least in the robot mode, other than these bits back here that have paint on them from the dinosaur mode, really, we're not looking at too much paint. It's not horrible because he is molded fairly well, so that's okay. I do wish he had a little bit more just to bring out all those details. I could see customizers really going to town on this guy and making him look awesome. So that's pretty good so far. Not a ton of paint, but still looks pretty good. The head is on a ball peg, but it actually gives him a good range of motion. The head moves all around full swivel. The chin can bump on this piece right here that I'm pointing at, but if you lift the chin up, it's not its not like he has to look up to miss it, so that's fine. You can bring the head down just a little bit to give him kind of a mean look. You can lean the head from side to side a little bit, so that's pretty cool. The shoulder is a giant ball peg, but it doesn't look horrible, and it gives him a good range of motion. Of course, we have the full swivel. Can't bring the arm out to the side too, too much, so that's a little disappointing, but it's not horrible. I mean, I for some reason, it doesn't bother me. I don't know why, I guess because I don't see him being super flexible in the first place. But you can bring the arm out like that, so it's not too, not so bad. Then we have a bicep swivel right here, a double jointed elbow. Now the problem with this being double jointed is you can't use them both really at the same time. They bump up against each other. So you can use the one, which is ratcheted, or you can use the other, which isn't ratcheted. But once you try to combine them, you, don't, you can't really combine them too well. So that's a little disappointing. Then the wrist on this side has a swivel. The thumb has a ball peg in there to let the thumb move around. These three fingers are on a hinge, and this finger is on a hinge. And then on this side, we don't have any of that. We have the thumb on the ball peg, so I guess we have a little... We have the thumb, which is nice. And the hand is made to look like, like it can hinge, but it can't. The hand is just one solid piece. And that is for the light-up feature, which I will explain. Uh, the dinosaur toes can fold down, as you saw earlier. You can bring these forward if you want to. It's completely up to you. They are die cast. The paint job on them, or the coloring, however they do that, I'm pretty sure it's just gold paint. I don't know if it's showing up. It does have texturing on there a little bit, so that might be what you're seeing, but the paint job is not the best. It looks worn, like kind of like an old toy. Kind of like the G1 toys look like. Most of the time when you find them, that's what it looks like to me. 
so that could be better. The torso articulation, it's just kind of wobbly. There's not really articulation anywhere in here. It just doesn't snap together. We do have a waist swivel. It's a little bit limited, but it is there, so that's appreciated. The hips now, unlike the primes that we've seen, there's no ratcheting and it's not tight enough. So that is a huge problem, big, big problem for me. Even forward, it's not ratcheted, it's tight enough, but it isn't ratcheted, so that's still gonna be iffy and it may start to become too loose. We do have a thigh swivel here, it's pretty loose though. We have a knee hinge and it's super, super tight ratchet. I feel like it's gonna break every time I do it, but it does give us good range of motion in the knee, so that's not so bad. You can see how it's designed there. The ratchet's up there and it kind of tucks into the lower leg. So that's how that works. And then the ankle articulation is not really ankle articulation. I mean, we kind of have a little bit of a lift right here for the toe, but it doesn't really give you much. Just a little bit. Then you can kind of... Oops, you don't want to do that. That's not good. You can kind of give it an ankle rocker, but it doesn't really accomplish much. It goes out more than it goes in, so... Again, that's a little disappointing. Could have been better in the ankles, I think. Now, the legs, they do fill them in nicely. There's no hollow parts, but this part right here that folds in, there's no snapping. It doesn't get held in place in any way at all. It just kind of sits there. So those are gonna be falling out a lot. It's not even a stiff joint. It's really loose, so that's gonna be a bit of an issue. The dinosaur head back here, it kind of cradle, is cradled by this piece, but it doesn't snap in again. So that it might also be an issue for you. These pieces back here are ratcheted, so you can put them however you want, whichever way you think looks best. That won't be an issue. These you can move around a little bit, so that won't be an issue. So there are some problems. So far, nothing too big, nothing too bad that will keep you from buying it. One of the other issues is it likes to not stay connected. This, kind of like the uh, Starscream and Thundercracker, there's not really much holding this whole torso thing together. It is problematic. And, I'd like to point out that the hips, being as loose as they are, I just had him standing on a shelf like this, and he just fell and did the splits all on his own. So that's not good. If you have this guy standing precariously at all, and he does the splits on his own, you could have a rather expensive figure taking a rather expensive shelf dive. So you want to be careful with that. So I have the crown, I'll show you how that goes on. That just sits on this way. And it kind of snaps into place. So then he has the crown. Or the crown of leadership, if I remember correctly. And so we can get rid of that. I don't like the crown personally. And now we have the blaster and the sword. So they both have little pegs. You see that little peg next to the big peg? They both have those. And that is so that you can snap it into his hand there. He can't actually hold it with his fingers. So you peg that in to his hand, and that's how he holds it, which is fine. No issues, that looks fine. And same thing with the sword. I have the little peg next to the big peg. So we just peg that in there, and he can hold the sword. So that's good. That's on the left hand. Now on the right hand, we have a little bit of a bonus. So if you'll notice, this hand has no peg hole, just the hole for the handle. So we can just put it in there and he's holding the sword that way. Now, the reason the sword is clear is because this piece back here is a button that makes the sword light up. And it's kind of hard to see, so I'm gonna turn off the lights and hopefully that'll work for us. Turn out most of the lights, let's turn them all out. And let's see how the sword lights up. Pretty cool. I wish the light was a little bit more intense. You can only see it coloring the front end of the sword if you look at it kind of head on. If you look at it from the side, just kind of disappears. So that's a little bit disappointing. He does maintain all of his articulation, so that's kind of cool. Let's throw the blaster on there and I'll show you how that works. Now this didn't look like it was gonna work very well when I had it with the lights on, so let's see. Yeah, the blaster doesn't work very well unless you're looking directly on it. If you look at it from the side, you can barely tell the top. But head on, it doesn't look too bad. So is that a good gimmick? In theory, yes, in theory it's a good gimmick. In execution, neither of them work all that well. So I can't say it's a great idea. It's kind of cool, but it's not great. That's kind of how I feel about this guy. He does look awesome and you can pose him fairly well, but the loose hips and the fact that the torso wants to fall apart, 
I wouldn't say it's a deal breaker, but it is pretty frustrating on an $80 figure. I know that's not too much money to spend on a masterpiece, but I feel like they could have just put a few snaps here and there, made the hips ratcheted, you would have had a great figure as opposed to a good one that has problems that some people may not like. So I'm not going to say whether or not you should buy this. It really depends on how much you like Grimlock and how much you want to spend on a figure and how much you can tolerate in terms of flaws. It does look great though on a shelf. I have to say, if you're a Grimlock fan, I can't imagine anybody saying this doesn't look good. I do like the way it looks a lot. I was planning on returning it actually, to be honest, once I first started looking at it, I thought, well this guy's way too loose and floppy and problematic, but he is really growing on me. He is a really cool looking figure. So uh, that that's my take on it. I do like it. Whether or not I recommend it, it's really going to be up to you and how much you feel about the figure and that kind of thing. So that's the robot mode. Let me get him transformed and we will talk about the dinosaur mode. Alright, so we have Grimlock transformed into his dinosaur mode and it it's kind of good and it's kind of not. It does have a very classic look to it. I do appreciate that. It has some paint applications in there. We've got the big Autobot logo on the chest. He has all of these clear parts with the gold inside. Got the torso from the robot mode down here. So that's kind of cool. You have these uh, claws that are individu individually articulated and they're nice and chromed and shiny. He's got the shiny chrome teeth. So it looks pretty good. You have the chrome tail, which you can wag. So that's okay, I guess. Um, we have a couple of features. So the first feature is once you open the mouth, he has a little bit of a gun thingy in there. Uh, you guys know I'm not the hugest G1 fan, so I'm not sure what that is exactly. It might be a flamethrower if I had to guess, that's what I would say, but I don't know for sure, so go ahead and uh, yell at me in the comments, that's okay. Anyway, you press this little Superman-shaped logo, almost, right there, and he has a biting feature. So that's kind of cool, I guess. You can pop open his head and pull this piece down and swap out the eyes so that instead of the red eyes he has the blue eyes so that's a cool feature i'm glad they included that just like they did for the robot mode i prefer red though personally so let's put the red back in there it's just a little spring-loaded spinny thingy come on it's a little harder to do with one hand come on oh i'm doing it the wrong way don't put them on backwards or it won't work there we go Okay, so we have that. Now we also have, well let's talk about the articulation before we go into these other features. This is just a giant ball peg with a single hinge for the elbow and the hinges in the hands there. So it's a little bit limited, not as good as I would like, but you know, it's not horrible. It's not completely useless. So we do have that, same on both sides. The hips, same as the shoulders before, we have the ball peg and then the swivel, the whole arm basically. And you already saw the tail wag. So we have two other features. One feature is that if you push down on him so that his hips have to push up, it makes the head tilt up like that. And that's supposed to be a cool feature, I'm guessing. And I'm going to show you how it works. Well, first of all, he can't hold his own weight. The tail end is too heavy. So if you want to balance him, and even then it doesn't really look very good, and it still doesn't balance, you have to lean him really far forward. So that sucks. The only way to get him to stand well is to actually set him on his tail. So I don't care for that. But anyway, let's talk about this gimmick. So if you push down on him, it should make the head look up. It, it doesn't work for crap. It, first of all, when you do it, the legs just want to bend. So if I do this, the knees end up bending if I try hard enough. And, and as, as you can see, it just doesn't work well at all. It barely works, and I don't think I did anything wrong in putting it together. I can't figure out anything that needs to be changed, and then the legs collapse like that. So it's just, again, I could be doing something wrong, but I don't think so, so I have to say that is a problem. Then the other gimmick is the head swivels, and according to the instructions, when the head swivels, the tail is supposed to swivel, or when the tail swivels, the head is supposed to. So I guess that works a little bit, but it makes the construction look horrible, it looks really bad, and it really, I mean, it does work a little bit, I guess, but frankly, I think that's a really silly gimmick and completely unnecessary, because the whole bottom half of this thing is just, it's not kibbly, because it's like kind of like the right shape, but it's just, it's not, nothing's connected well, so 
just to get the head to move a little bit sometimes. I don't think that's good. That's the kind of gimmick I don't appreciate. So I have to say, if you were planning on keeping him in his dinosaur mode, it's not a good idea. I don't think it's very well executed. The robot mode, with its flaws, I still do appreciate it and I do like it. So I have to say I can't not recommend it, although it's not quite there to get the full stamp of approval. So it's really going to be a value judgment on your behalf. So I hope you guys have learned at least a little bit about this figure in this review and hopefully enough to make a good decision, a well-informed decision on if you're going to buy it or not. So there it is, guys. There's the reissue MP03 Masterpiece Grimlock. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more figure reviews, custom figures, and other good stuff. And in the meantime, keep collecting.